So WWDC 2021 just went down, and this is a recap of everything HomeKit Smart Home related that was mentioned this year. Let's go. Yo, what's up guys? Thanks so much for joining me. My name is Shane and this channel is all about building an easy smart home using Apple's HomeKit with new videos released every Sunday right here. And yes, today is not Sunday, but Apple just held their annual developers conference and they actually talked about some smart home stuff for just a little while. So I figured I'd get on here, we'll discuss everything new that they mentioned. Let's jump right into it. First of all, regarding tvOS, there's a few features here that are new. You'll have a new feature called Shared Play, which is a way to seamlessly watch content on your Apple TV and actually other devices if you want with your friends. They're also including a new shared with you row on the Apple TV that'll display all the shows and movies that your friends have shared with you. There's also gonna be a new all of you row on the Apple TV with suggestions for all of the users on the Apple TV, which I can see as being nice for families when you're trying to watch something together uh, as a family. And speaking of the Apple TV, they will be bringing spatial audio to the Apple TV when using your AirPods Pro or AirPods Mac. One thing they mentioned that's really nice is better integration between the HomePod Mini and the Apple TV. So for example, we'll finally be able to tell the HomePod to play a specific show and the Apple TV will then respond accordingly. You can tell it to play, fast forward, and all of that good stuff too. They also mentioned that later this year, the HomePod Mini will be able to be connected to your Apple TVs as default audio speakers, which is really good. I know a lot of people have been wanting that. So so all in all, I'm happy to see more integration between the HomePods and the Apple TV, you know, just getting better over time. Speaking of HomePods, they also mentioned that lossless audio will be coming to the HomePod Minis later this year. They'll also be making the HomePod Mini available in more regions as well as voice recognition will be available everywhere that the HomePod Mini ships. Now, not much was really mentioned regarding the Home app. Unfortunately, they did show some updates for the Home app on the Apple Watch, uh, which might be nice if you like to use your Apple Watch to control your smart home. It'll feature a new design with a quick access to accessories and scenes, plus the intercom button, and you'll also be able to view HomeKit cameras from your Apple Watch. Now, they also showed a new feature called Home Keys, which is basically a digital key that lives in your Apple Wallet app and can unlock your doors via NFC with a tap of your Apple Watch or your iPhone. So this will work for hotel keys and stuff like that, but also smart locks. Some brands that I actually noticed on screen were the Slage or Slage, I'm not really sure how you say that, and Acora also. So that's a pretty cool feature. I'm looking forward to seeing that come to some of our smart locks. Now, a pretty interesting feature that sort of took me by surprise is that soon third-party accessory developers will be able to integrate the Siri voice assistant into their HomeKit products. So they showed an example of someone using Siri built Built into an Ecobee thermostat. So this could potentially be good for HomeKit, possibly a way to get the Siri voice assistant into more rooms and more homes. So Siri on these devices should still be able to communicate locally, you know, within your home, uh, to your home pods without requiring any third party servers, still keeping everything local and private. So that's nice. And they also talked about updates coming to HomeKit cameras. So HomeKit secure cameras currently have the ability to differentiate between people, animals, and vehicles. And coming soon, they will also be adding package detection. You'll also be able to control nearby accessories while viewing a camera on the Apple TV. Also, soon you'll be able to view multiple HomeKit cameras on your Apple TV all at once, sort of like a grid view. And possibly my favorite announcement of the day, at least regarding HomeKit, is that we'll finally be able to add unlimited HomeKit secure video cameras to our home. Finally, and stored recordings for those cameras will not count against your allotted iCloud storage. So this is a very welcome update for us HomeKit users that have 
many HomeKit secure video cameras in our house. This is actually a part of a new service Apple is calling iCloud Plus that will apparently be included at no extra cost to those already paying for a higher tier of iCloud service. So from what I understand with the 50 gigabyte plan, you can use one HomeKit secure video camera. With the 200 gigabyte plan, you can use up to uh, five HomeKit secure cameras and with the two terabyte plan, you can use an unlimited amount of HomeKit secure video cameras. And again, recordings for those secure cameras will not count against that allotted iCloud storage. They also mentioned that later this year, support for Matter will be built into iOS 15 and the Home app, allowing users to control HomeKit and Matter devices. So Matter, previously known as Project Chip, is the initiative by many of the big name companies, including Apple, to develop a smart home standard. So much of this is still really unclear as far as how these products will support Matter and HomeKit, you know, and other platforms, but uh, we'll be sure to check that out here on the channel as we learn more. So definitely subscribe if you haven't already so that you don't miss out on that. Another thing that got me pretty excited also is the announcement that Siri shortcuts will soon be available on the Mac. <sighs> yes, I'm very happy about that. Uh, even though not exactly HomeKit related, the possibilities that you can do with shortcuts and your smart home are pretty incredible. So I'm happy to finally be able to create and manage my shortcuts on the Mac. And if you wanna learn more about Siri shortcuts and automations, be sure to check out this video right over here. And that's pretty much everything smart home related that we got from WWDC this year. I'm sure we'll learn more as time goes on and people start to dive into those betas. If you're into building a smart home, especially with HomeKit, definitely make sure you hit that subscribe button. We're releasing new HomeKit videos every Sunday right here on this channel. Thanks so much for watching and until next time, we'll see y'all later.